Greenleaf, Grace is in Phoenix. Um, visiting the boy. Did we know she was going to Phoenix last week? I don't know that. It's just like she appeared in Phoenix. Which, you know, good for her. Right, right, right. Um, she didn't tell him she was coming, him being uh, AJ, mm -hmm. who she was going around telling everybody is her son. Well, because every time she, she sees somebody who might know him, it's, you know, I'm his mother. I'm his mother. It's like, girl, y'all just getting to know each other. Well, yeah, she's accepted her, her, her place as his mama. Where's other mama at? I don't know. I got some questions. I don't know where you got. I never heard that he was adopted. He just might not have ever been adopted. Just in the system. I mean, if y'all heard, let us know, but I ain't never heard. I heard that she gave him up. Yeah. But I never heard that he was taken in. The nurse whisked him away when she, as soon as he was born. But to whom? We didn't find out. Anyway, um, so he, he comes downstairs. They call for him to come downstairs. Um, and as soon as he sees us, he says, what are you doing here? And you know, I really didn't see it for that kind of behavior last week when he gave the, are you going to help me or not kind of speech thing. I really didn't like that attitude. And there's some backstory that's still missing. How do you know? they are if you were giving up to the system because grace told us he got her information at, uh, at 18 when he turned 18 now I, they she, released the information it's not like she said he got you might be right about him being adopted because she might i think she might say he got um her information from the adoption agency so i really i don't know but he did get her information at, at uh, her age 18 i don't know where you were but they said it twice you know I probably was three times. not processing that because I didn't know that was the thing. Uh, yeah, in, in any story that they tell about somebody showing up after having been long lost and adopted, they always get the information at 18. Or after 18. Or after. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll accept it. I mean, you ain't got a choice, but thank you. I cannot accept it if I don't want to. Anyway, um, he's upset. He don't want her to be there. And, you know, he, he just said that the deal was you give me the money and we go on about our day. That, that was no deal, really. No. She just said she's going to help you. You, know? you got to understand when people are going to help you, they have their contingencies. Yeah, conditions. Thanks. Thanks so, upon things that they need you to do. It's not going to No, work. not that they need, because Grace hasn't required anything of this boy. Well, she required that he listen. But she was having trouble. No, she didn't require that. She didn't. Yeah, she, she didn't. wouldn't leave. And she said, I, I got to talk to you. That was for her benefit. She was still going to help him. That was not a requirement of him. That was a request of her. I mean, you can turn your face up if you want to, but I said what I said. I'm making requirements for the child. But that's not your child. All children are mine. Why are you looking at me, man? It's three lanes. Do we have problems? You want to speed on up there and I can give him some looks? Do I need to go to my lockbox? Anyway, um, by the time I did all that, everything deal. Back in, right, because you got to get the, yeah. the key yeah. and go around the back of the seat and um, just do anything. Um, back in Memphis, First Lady Seal got had a dream. Very much like Maureen and Rent, last night she had a dream. She was walking through a desert called Cyberland. It was dark, no, it was hot, and she was thirsty, parched. Um, I know most of y'all ain't never seen Rent, so it don't really apply to y'all, but. Uh, my Fitbit told me I was parched today. I told him how much water I had. He said, you must be parched. That's what he said. You must be. In the meantime, uh, Seal done had this dream. She had a dream that she was at a, at a museum. And there was a commotion and the security guard started screaming. And she went to see what that was about because somehow she could outdo the security in, in protecting anyone. She had this dream. Dreams are get, weird. Not in my dream. If I hear a security guard hollering, I'm leaving. You the security. You got the pistol and the training, I hope. Or the authority to call somebody, detain somebody, something could go on. Get you, you got, got some more authority than I do, and so I'm leaving. But Seal, Lady May Seal decides uh -huh. that she's going to follow the sound of the screaming. And she goes into the room and sees a beautiful painting of our Lord and Savior, God. Hey. And it is ripped right down the middle and she sees James and James has a knife covered in blood in his hand and he apologized unto Lady Seal and I'm trying to figure out like this dream is weird if the pain is 
was real. Why he got a bloody knife? Well, this was the first dog. So you you got to stop eating them sardines at 11 o'clock. Like he didn't he didn't he didn't cut the picture. He didn't cut God. Cut the picture with toe. Toe in half. He said it was ripped down the middle. Ripped. Not sliced. See, but I have weird dreams every night. You need to stop eating crazy stuff at night too. I don't eat nothing crazy. I just, you know, when you're depressed, you have dreams. No, I have dreams, but I'm not depressed. I have both times. I have them both. I have them down. Guess who I'm talking about? Jesus. I'm talking about myself. And guess what? It ain't got nothing to do with it. Jesus. Yeah, I wish you would stop. I wish you could just say, you know, you're right. That was, that was not even about me. I thought we were having a conversation. What are you having a But I'm talking talk? about myself. That's the thing. It, it, it can be a conversation, but I'm talking about me and when i'm talking about me you you jump in sometimes and you I, I, it's, it, you take away from what i'm saying i don't think i was taking it away i don't think i was talking about comparisons it's okay i, I hope you can have happy dreams on happy days i didn't say i had bad dreams all the time i said i had weird dreams anyway ricky dillard is back you know the uh homosexual musician that works with the charity and they listening to a song by Harmony and Hope. And, uh, and Harmony and Hope, uh, the, the pastor, the main. It needs neither Harmony or Hope. Yeah. The guy, the main guy's daughter wrote the song. So they sing it in every service, in every church, all across the, I guess, the continental United States. Like, I don't know if they international. Know. It was Harmony and Hope International, wasn't it? Yeah, but I mean, we got churches that are one church right here where 12 members are international churches. But they're not. But you can't tell them that it's on this side. I can't tell them that. I would do something. I understand the definition of international. I can literally tell them that they are not. We are international. Somebody overseas looks at us. We are international because someone overseas does look at us. But the church around, around the corner with 12 members, if they're not broadcasting across yonder, they're not international. International. Anyway, um, it was a thing a few years ago to be an international ministry. Where are you going? I'm going to drop off something if I can because I keep forgetting to do something. So, anyway, Charity and Ricky Dilla don't like the song, and so Charity decides to type up a strongly worded email. You know, Charity and Carissa are two of the same, they're the same raggedy, ugly heifer. The same, but one is like the mean version and the other one is the, the sad version, the melancholy, no one ever. You know, Lil Richard at the 1988 Grammy Awards awarding Jody Watley with uh, Artist of the Year. Ain't nobody ever gave me nothing. Nothing. That's Jody what nobody ever that. gave him. Jody That's is very that. It. But not funny, because Lil Richard made it funny. Never gave me nothing. I am the architect of rock and roll and I still say woo. I need to go there, but I made it, I had another change of heart. Your heart got too many changes. It just changes. Um, yeah, Charity is very little Richard awarding Jody Wiley with the best new artist. Ain't nobody ever gave me nothing. Ain't nobody ever hugged me. Y'all don't love me. Y'all don't care about me. I am the self-proclaimed black sheep of the family. When it's like, girl, you grown. Now, I don't know about when you were a child, but you are grown. Find something to do. Go, go, go make your baby feel unlike you do. Go hug your baby, go kiss your baby, and make sure your baby don't feel like, you know, he is the architect of rock and roll and nobody ever gave him nothing. It just don't make no sense. Feeling, just having his own feeling. So she types up a, a strongly worded letter. Um, even though Ricky Dillard asked her not to because he wanted to go to Grace first because Grace requested that he, you know, goes to Grace before going to any of the... Um, right, them people. Mm-hmm. And so she ignores that, <laughs> you know, ignores Ricky Dillard's request. Well, initially um, she didn't, but then, you know, it don't take nothing to get Charity sidetracked, nothing. I mean, she took her eyebrows back in there, went to work. <laughs> Can we just, I'm gonna get back to it. I'm gonna get around to it. She types that email and we she move did. on. She did. Sister Williams. Sister Misty Williams done run up in the church, honey. She's sweating her hair falling all and loose. You know, she got the French roll and it's coming done, undone, girl. She's, her, her shirt was hanging off her shoulder. She was just in a, in a in, as a big-headed preacher man said, in a state. You look like you're in a state. And I suppose I am, she says. Like, girl, yeah, ain't no supposed to. You look a mess. How that moving? A crazy, foolish mess. I wonder what that's going to be. Probably a dollar mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, oh, it's a little small. 
Somebody just said that one down the street. Maybe a family dog. Probably because you know they're the same girl. Right. Anywho, um, and she's asking, where's Grace? Where's Grace? Where's Grace? Now, Secretary Helfer, and I want to know, I really, really want to know, why this church, this big old church, only got one secretary? They, they don't ever, they, they ain't no cool. They don't go to the water cooler and have secretary talk. It's just her. It is so crazy to me. So she must be an executive assistant because she works with all the executives. Maybe there's some lower level. Maybe the quiet person has a person that copies the charity. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's charity. Charity side lyrics. It just doesn't, I just don't understand. For the Army and Hope School. This church is, it's a movie. Is, it, it is, it, I mean, it has moving parts. It has programs. It has this, it has that. You know, they had, um, what's the gay boyfriend name? Kevin. Kevin was over a certain program. Grace was over a different program. They have all these associate pastors and associate ministers and, and assistant pastors and lead pastors and first ladies and lady assistants and Lady Day and Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald and just everybody's there. But they only got one secretary. She good too. I mean, she is just everywhere doing everything. And she calls the people that don't work there no more. I mean, on the phone, honey, she walking there. And she do all that walking and she ain't lost no weight, no shame to the actress. But I'm just trying to figure out if you got time to be everywhere. Honey, you need to have on your, your, your power walking kind of shoes. That's Carmen San Diego outfit, though. I mean, yeah, she was, she was in Cognigra. She was deep down in the church Cognigra. parking lot. I'm just trying to figure out. She is everybody assisting. Everybody telling her the whole day calls. Everybody talking about, oh, no, that's all. Charity gave her, that's all. That's oh, a good that, that was a lot. Charity is just the devil. She, she needs medicine. Ooh, she needs some medication. But then, when I think more about, because I got a lot to say about uh, Secretary Heffer. Why she Heffer? Because she's in everybody's business, spilling everybody's tea. Why is she trying to get her church back no, in she's line? Not. No, she's not. She's being messy, and I'll get there, but I'm not there yet. Now, when I think more about her, it wasn't that revealed last season or season before that that is lesbian wig uh, Deacon's granddaughter. Mm. Ain't that her grandma? Mm. That far down, does she look like she's not young enough to be older? Well, well you know, know, they put that real great wig on, on Deacon Lesbian. I mean, she could be 45. She could be, but they put the wig on there, so you're supposed to know she's seasoned. I mean, you're supposed to look at the wig and automatically say, yeah, she got 72, 73. She look good in the face. She's a black people. She, she but, she, no, but they put that stark white wig on her, so you will know she's old. She drinks water. Look like she all right. She looks good. But ain't that, uh... Ain't that Secretary Heffel's uh, grandmama? I can't know, and I don't want to just mess up that girl's life. Because when they was having, when they was having a home get together, scoot on up. They was having this, this get together down at the house, remember? And Jacob was there, and Charity was there. I think Kevin popped in, but Kevin was trying to figure out. No, Charity was at the, um, honey, at the Hotel California, singing in the lounge with the baby, the beginning of her mental, you know, illness. Her meltdown. And, and Kevin, remember Kevin bust up in there and was asking Grace where Charity was and called the police on Charity and they went and picked up Charity and got the baby over back to Kevin. And they ain't seen the baby this season. Yes, we have. Where the baby at? Oh, baby, oh that's right. First episode, she the baby wanted the baby his dog. mama and mama was busy. Child, if I was Grace, I'd just take that baby. Charity, I already hate you. Just gonna take custody of her baby. <laughs> take it over to your brother and your brother in law's house. Brother in law twice over. And uh, y'all just what coped with it. Right? since we've been here last. You know, they've changed the, the uh, it's, like it's this, a whole different. It ain't the same people. No, this the, this the fourth car wash been here. Girl, um, I'm just trying to wash some of this dirt off this car. And this yes, you should, because this is a shame. It is very, and I don't have time to do it, but I'm doing it. Damn, but, um, but yeah, if I was Grace, honey, I'd have been to Charity, baby. Charity won't know the difference. Cause she don't be in there with the baby. She won't know if you got her baby or not. Put a doll in there, she got it. <laughs> Child, I'd have took that baby and me and my nephew. You know I love my nephews. Me and my nephew be out kicking it. We be at the zoo, honey, just having a good time. They are neglecting little Nathan, and I don't care for them. Anyway, welcome to Zips. Hey. hey. Unlimited Watch Club members enjoy unlimited. Oh, see, that's what I really want to sign up for. Me too, but I'm not close enough to get them. Right. Anybody come away across the hall? Pressing the red purchase membership. Oh, y'all. Or press single watch. I thought she was a single watch. Long Granny have the unlimited here. I don't know if they done changed the name of the place. We don't know what she got. Anywho, child. Um. So the church secretary. Hold on, y'all. I, I can't with her talking. Please select the car wash by pressing one of the service buttons on the screen. Get the one with the tire shine. Girl, I'm getting the dirt off the car. Please this is best I can. Get the dirt off and the tire. And then select the finish selecting button located at the bottom of the screen. 
pleases or cash for questions. All these so questions. All pleases and caring on. This other person that went by me, they in the wild. They probably got the you are now ready to enter the car wash. Thanks, Please boo. proceed by following the directions on a sign to head. And then you give us our receipt. I want my receipt. Appreciate you, girl. So, Chair, uh, uh, what, what, uh, Stylist Helper, what is her name? Stylist? I mean, not Stylist Helper, honey. I had to move over to um, Temptation. Um, Temptation is ambitious. Um, what is. Secretary Heffer, dog, go on. You know what I'm talking about. They done made it dark in here. Oh, yeah, this is sexy. It's going right. to be dark. I like this. It used to be light. Yeah, I think that's good for the uh, for the, the uh, attendant. So he don't be out here burning the deal. Because he look co re relatively comfortable. Yeah. He look like he do drag on the weekends. I want to ask him what way he's curling. He got curling ass. Oh, yeah, it's not his hair. It's not his hair. That hair is natural. You what? Black. Did it get me? Yeah, got you, girl. It got you. Okay. Anyway, um... Stylist, I mean, gosh, Secretary Heffel. Secretary Heffel going around telling everybody Grace out of town. So, Misty Williams come in asking, where's Grace? Because you know she's in a state. In a state of disarray, she just look a mess. And, um, Grace, I mean, not Grace, Secretary Heffel is like, she's, she's not in town, she's out of town. Now she's out of the office. Not may I take a message. Nothing, you know, of, of, Nothing that you would expect your secretary, if she's good enough to be everybody in the world's secretary, you would expect her to say, oh, she's not in right now, but I, you know, I'll let her know if you drive by. Now she had a town. Apparently, there was no secret between them. It was. And even if it wasn't, it's not everybody business she had a town. I agree. Because you told me, I hope y'all can hear. You told me when I was little, if I answered the phone and you weren't available to say you're not available. Right. You might be a baby. You might just be in the bathroom. And I could say, hold on, she's in the bathroom. That ain't a secret. You go to the bathroom. Everybody go to the bathroom. At some point, we got to go. But you told me to say she's not available at the moment. May I take a message? Or may I have her call you back? You told me that in like three. Everybody mama don't teach me these things. They don't think of it. I do know. But it don't make no sense for her to be the oldest secretary. Uh, apparently, she's the best secretary. Lady May said, we need you to keep your job. All right. Blue lights. I want y'all to see these blue lights. I guess sexy. Anyway, um, Lady May wants her to keep her job. We need you when we get back. She had a good secretary. How does she do her job like she supposed to? Are you trying to be contrary or are you just, you do you really think she does her job? I mean, she on TV. We don't see what she do on the other time when we're not on the third line. But I'm talking about from what we have seen, do you think she does her job? Do you think she does well enough for me? I'm just complaining for nothing or what? Or are you trying to be contrary? I'm trying to get an understanding. I ain't trying to be contrary. But you're being contrary. So I'm trying to understand. Are, are you just... Much better. I'm not trying to be contrary. But do you actually feel like she does well enough to, to be the secretary of, of, of uh, what is it, Calvary? Apparently somebody does. I'm asking you. Well, I'm, I don't, okay, as a person who's been one of these people, but you, I don't, we, they're not showing us her actually doing just work work. They show her transitioning people from place to place. Where is so and so? What is happening with that person? Blocking people. That ain't real secretary work. That's Mama, just like I'm a not fraction of this. real secretary work. I'm so I don't. I can't. And on TV, you don't TV have an land? opinion at all about this about her character on the show. My opinion is she she uh, she busy. Okay, I'm through. I'm sorry. Um, because it's like it is like pulling teeth. So I'm, I'm trying I'm to figure out. I'm not you, sure. I'm not asking you from your life experience. I'm not sure what the what question you. What is she doing badly or wrong? I literally or? just gave you a list. Okay. She's yeah. telling folks where folks are. She is. I mean, I, I can say he gave you a full example. Okay, well, child, you have to understand. You have to understand. Everybody's relationship, everybody's situation isn't like ours. Now, if I had an office and I was the I was the boss, that was the way I would have people do it. Some people don't do that. So, I, and I know that. And the fact of the matter was, Grace was out of town. She didn't feel the need to cover for her. Okay. I like being covered. Okay. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand you and how your mind works. I really don't. But we're gonna we're, we're gonna move along. 
Um, she tells Charity, who obviously has ulterior motives, and anybody can see that, but whatever, um, that Grace is out of town. Charity takes it over to the big head preacher. Now, I know Lady May, at least, Lady May, at least Lady May, uh, if not any other of the Greenleaf family, has said that um, we don't really trust these these folks, keep your eyes out, to the Secretary of Health. So I don't understand. And she she's calling over to the Green Leaves to relay information. I don't know, whatever. She I just don't like her. How about that? Moving along. Um, Silverthroat and Jacob get together. Jacob tells Silverthroat about his problem with his wife and how she just really wants to move. And I'm trying to figure out if she got a job, why she can't get a apartment. Why she can't get a little house somewhere. It don't have to be nice and fancy. It just gotta have electricity. Electricity. Y'all finna send this girl off to school. Like, why y'all can't get you a little two-bedroom apartment? Or why couldn't they move into the little cabin on Noah's estate? I mean, on the, the Noah you stay in, on the family's estate. Why they gotta be up in the house? I'm trying to figure out why Carissa can't come up with any other solutions. She just... Everything got to be just exactly what she said. It's crazy to me. Um... So Bishop Silverthroat tells Jacob to tell Carissa no. And to love her better, I don't know. I really couldn't take advice from my very recently divorced father about how to woo how to woo a woman, but I just I couldn't. Because I'd be like, you just now you just you just lost my mom two weeks ago. But anyway. Oh. Um yeah, I just dream, in the meantime, Grace still over there with AJ and uh, this is when Secretary Heffer is telling Charity about her sister being across the country. Now, if, and that's another thing. If that's your sister and she crossed the country, what business do I have telling you? If your sister didn't tell you she crossed the country, well, I'm going to tell you. Y'all live in the same house? That's why I say I don't see it for Secretary Heffer. She too busy. She telling for she, she done told this girl's sister and her mama. And if the girl didn't tell her sister and her mama, what business do you have telling this girl's sister and her mama she crossed the country? That don't make no sense to me. Anywho, um, so Grace takes AJ over to look at an apartment. He saw it's got a pool and he, you know, he wants to swim. I'm happy for him. He might might be the next Michael Phelps. Um, and they looking at the apartment. It was a large apartment, honey. It was big, it was a deluxe apartment in the sky. I was like, now Grace, you might want to start him off with something small. You don't know this boy. Like we love him and everything, he's our son. We don't know this boy. Don't know him. I mean, it had marble, uh, marble countertops and carrying all white interior. Like, girl, you don't know this boy. Anyway, sis, Jimmy, what are you doing? Listening. They looking around. Trying to figure out what is good vibes. I just pass up and call good vibes. You pass it all the time. I do, but I don't know what it is. Something happened. Right there, down there. Dead. I need to get down to my Kentucky Fried Chicken. You want to go now or on your way back? I kind of want to go now, but we ain't got much time. We got to add her. You know, she likes to, to kind of take up some of Which one? We should do left, right. It's up to you, daughter. Anyway, um, so we're looking at the department, honey, and the white lady who's representing uh, the sales. What is that? A real estate agent. Mm -hmm. The real estate agent says, um, no, nah, because your boy got a record. And she was kind of nasty. A little bit, but I mean, that was a very nice apartment. <laughs> But, <laughs> but still, but you know how white people do. I mean, if you're gonna be, I mean, you, the answer was no. You ain't gotta be nasty, no. Just no. Why like, we just can't? But do she's it. a white lady. They, you know, not all of you, because I know we got a couple of white ladies on here. Some, so, you know, some we enjoy. Just don't understand that license can go a long way. This boy could turn out to be somebody spectacular. Then you're gonna be up in his face. And he go, you, the one that was nasty to me. You never know. You never know. I hope they can hear you moving on. Zora nigga Hurston. Zora nigga Hurston done got all up in drags, honey, up in pumps, going on down to the church so she can meet with this little ugly boy. The boy ain't cute. What is her taste? Skinny. Her taste seems to be very thin, very effeminate. Effeminate man. They've got just a little bit of, you know. I mean, when you, it's hard to be real masculine when you're really skinny. Though. It's not that hard. I've like had very skinny boyfriends. I've had, you know, plumper, more delicate boyfriends. <laughs> It's just, I, mm -mm. Mm -mm, I don't know. They all look like they give good hand performance. 
when they're voguing film. Um, but she goes down to the church so she can flirt with this boy and she meets with him and his girlfriend here and I knew immediately when I saw that ponytail she was gonna give a lesbian tease, but I waited and watched and let the thing kinda play itself out. She got a piece of an attitude with Zora Nigga Hurst and what was her name? Kiki? Cece? Mm, she was held when I saw the attitude I did not retain her yeah. name I think it was something like Kiki or Stacy or something I don't know girl braided heifer braided heifer because she had that Tessa Thompson Met Gala braid and we know that Tessa Thompson Met Gala braid speaks to lesbianism um and so they meet up and she got a little bit of an attitude when the boyfriend around and the boyfriend go off to meet with Jacob and then they sitting at the table and she asked you know I guess you live with your mom and daddy huh she didn't say it like that because she, you know, she didn't have the, the, the southernness that I do. And the girl's like, yeah, I mean, kind of, I live on the estate. And the girl heard estate and she was just like, oh, okay, well, we need to be girlfriends now. Like, that's literally, like, I mean, she heard estate and she was like, well, let's go to the estate. I was like, uh-uh, gay activities, gay activities. So they scooch on over to the estate. And for some reason, Zora Nigger Hurston is teaching the girl how to do her baby hair, but her hair looked unchanged, completely unchanged. And um, then the girl gets close and is about to kiss her and Zora's looking like, oh Lord, what is going on? And then the, the boyfriend busts in and she, uh, uh, what's her name, girl? Kiki, TT, uh, Tabitha. No, not Tabitha, because I like my auntie Tabitha. Um, Caldonia. Caldonia ices her out, you know, again, once the boyfriend gets there. And it's just like, girl, what, what games are we playing? Dumb ones. I don't care for them. Um, we find out that AJ had done suffered. He went to jail because he was hungry and hot. And I understand because I'm hungry and hot right now. I'm not trying to go to jail though. But he had done broke into a house and got comfortable. He got sleepy. Laid down because the family was on vacation. I don't know how long he was asleep. Was he asleep a week? <laughs> like, was he at the end you of the vacation? Caught that or... the vacation, Lord? Did they have an alarm system and did the camera show you? Didn't that sleep? I just don't understand. But he had done fell asleep, Lord, and he went to jail. And uh, so now we kind of have a little uh, 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 a softened spot for AJ, or I do. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Let me see. So Grace done went out of town, and you know, uh, Secretary Heffer done told everybody. So she told Seal. Seal done called over to her daughter and said, "You've got to come home now." Now I forgot to write down in these notes. I really do think I did. That uh, Lady Seal and Bishop Silverthorpe went over to Mr. Williams' house and talked to Misty and Misty didn't really want to rehash everything that had been going on but she does anyway oh I just really don't feel like rehashing it but anyway let me tell you what happened my sister back on them drugs so apparently Grace was supposed to do an intervention help us you know help Misty do an intervention for her, her sister that's back on you know them pills and um Grace ain't in town now Grace was coming home tonight so she really didn't have to tell y'all where she was gonna be today because the intervention was gonna be tonight and she was coming home tonight but everybody up in arms, they're so upset. So upset. And um, so they, you know, try to smooth things over with, with, with Misty. And First Lady Seal pushes, you know, Bishop, y'all, go warm up the car. It's so chilly today. Now, mind you, it's the beginning of the summer. But it's so chilly today in Memphis, Tennessee, at the beginning of the summer. So chilly. I guess if you're right on the water, there's a little breeze. Other than that. That means you, go somewhere and do something here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you can just say, you don't have to lie. I don't ever feel the need to lie to get somebody to do, hey, uh, step out here, let me have this, you know, woman to woman. We don't need you right now, uh, James. Appreciate you, though. Go sit in the car. It don't take all that. Anyway, if you just go sit here and nod, you can go on in the inside. Because you're not really adding anything. You're just sitting there nodding, and you know that really it bothers me. Well, I was, but then that got to be a little problem, too, so... I just did what I know to do. This is a very yeah, good piece. Yeah, problem, sis. I was asking you a question and you were not answering it. I didn't have one. Then just say I don't have an answer. How I'm hard is it to say? Fishing around trying know. to find out what your answer, what the answer you were looking for was. I don't need you to find an answer I'm looking for. I need you, if you don't have an answer. See, that's crazy to me. Why would you try to find an answer? When I'm asking you a question, answer the question. You don't have to look for what I want you to say. That's insane. No, that's because the answer I was giving was not enough to satisfy the because thought. Because it wasn't an answer to the question. I have nothing to give. Then that's say that. That's all I have. Just say, girl, I, I really don't have. I that's don't, all I got. I don't have an opinion either way. Or whatever that's your TV. answer may have been. Oh, Jesus. You just, I, 
I don't know how many more of these uh, joint reviews we gonna do. I was trying. You weren't really trying. Really. I was. I don't know what you could have been trying to do. Trying to find an answer that would appease me instead of just saying I don't have an answer. It don't make sense to me. Anyway, Sister Williams tells Lady Seal they voted um, to join cacophony and, and, and helplessness for to get away from her because they believed that she knew about Mac. I believe she knew about, about Mac too. I do. But she said she didn't know. She really genuinely didn't know. And I'm sitting here like, but Grace told you. I think they said Faith told you. Faith killed herself. So obviously she had been having some difficulties prior to that moment. I do you I don't understand. Some people are oblivious. Mavis said something. Speaking of, where's Mavis? We ain't seen her in two seasons. Two seasons. Um, you know they didn't get along. But... Honey, she got in that car. She loaded up the truck and she moved to Beverly. Okay. Um, let me see here. So Charity goes and tells Big Head Preacher what Secretary Helfer told her about Grace being in Phoenix. Now he think that the white man, you know, Grace is going to talk to the white man. So he's sweating because he think his job might be on the line or something. I don't know. I really don't care. Um, I'm scared of the white man. I couldn't possibly. He looked like he two heart attacks away from death. Heart attack and a half. If you don't get that man some Dunkin' Donuts and sit back. Um. So yeah, I told y'all that Lady, Lady May Seal called over to Grace and told her to get back to town. So Grace tells AJ, well, I've got to go back, but... You know, I, I, I'm coming right back. I'm going to leave you with some money. And AJ shut down because he got abandonment issues. Y'all know I know all about it. Um, in the meantime, child, CL May done started crying. She crying because she hurt because everybody was trying to get away from her because she trash. I don't, I don't see how she couldn't see that she was trash. I don't understand. Seems like she would know. I know when I'm, I'm being trash. Everybody ain't well. Um, but anyway, she crying. She done told James, the dream wasn't about you, James. It was about me. And it's like, duh, girl. And, um, her feelings hurt. Carissa gives Jacob an ultimatum. Either you sell the land or you lose your wife. And I'm like, gonna lose that wife, Jacob. I'm sick of her. Um, let's see. We have a moment when Grace comes home. I don't know how we got here. It was so random. So out of source. I mean, I know that Lady May was looking at some slides. I guess she just called the family to come look at the slides too. Yeah. But anyway, Grace comes home. She gets, you know, straight from the airport and you hear her mama holler, Gigi, is that you? We're in the family room. And so they come on, she comes on into the family room and they get ready to look at slides. James couldn't figure out how to get the machine on and Jacob plugged it in and now we're going to play these slides. And they turn on the slides. First slide is Faith. And we have this long moment of deep, silent and sad reflection. And Jacob's getting ready to turn the slide. And, you know, he, he flips it and she says, no, no, not yet. You know, seal, not yet. I, I want the family all, you know, to be together, together. Um, And, you know, everybody deals with, with death and grief differently. Apparently, you can't go on Instagram live and grieve. But, you know, everybody deals with their things differently. <laughs> that was funny. And I thought it was a nice little, you know, family moment. You got Zora and her parents and you got... Um, the, you know, Charity was there. She wasn't acting a fool. And Grace sat down, you know, between her parents. You know, it, it would have been nice if Sophia was there, but Sophia acting up right now. So, without getting snatched up. Without getting snatched up. I don't know. Uh, but it would have been nice to have Sophia there and kind of round out, you know, the family that is living. Mavis could have come by too. We got to rectify this problem with Mavis. Anyway, um... So after all of that, Grace calls over to Phoenix, gets on the phone, <clears throat> the phone with AJ, and he gives her, what do you want? She says, I want you to come home. And that's the end of the episode. He kind of look, you know, pulls the phone down like he's just so shocked and surprised. And that's it. I like the end shot, you know, how they put it in the middle of the big room and move out. That's a pretty cool looking shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to go in here and look at Granny, and uh, we'll call y'all. Peace.